Church on the Mountain video. Uh, we can't wait to see you guys in real life, but in the meantime, we miss you and um, have an amazing day. Have a great day. We love you guys. We miss you all. Hey guys, Patrick here. Um, good morning. Good to see you here online. Uh, we're doing things a little different here, trying to figure out how to do this online church thing, but. Uh, I pray that God is meeting you in the midst of your homes and in every circumstance. Our heart is that um, God's abundance would be with you spiritually and physically and emotionally, that his peace would be upon you. So let's take some time to worship. Let's just, let's pray and have a, have a time of worship here. God, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. God, I just pray that you would meet each person in their home, God, that you would have your way in each one of us with our families, God. That you would give the peace that surpasses all understanding, God. That would guard our hearts and our minds in you, God. Have your way in each one of us, I pray, in Jesus' name. The splendor of the King
ever so worthy. You are so worthy, Jesus. Look at all you've done for us. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things. To you are all things. You deserve the glory. of it all you worthy of it all for from you are all things to you are all things you deserve the glory you are here Moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, Moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, Lord. You are way maker, miracle worker. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, mending every heart, I worship you, Lord, I worship you, oh, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are way maker, miracle worker, 
promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, faithful Lord, faithful friend, closer than a brother, in the midst of the storm, faithful Lord. Faithful friend, closer than a brother, every day, we put our trust in you, we put our hope in you, we lift our eyes to where our help comes from, maker of the heavens, creator of the earth. Nothing is too hard for you, nothing is too hard for you, nothing. You're more than able, you're more than able, you can heal, you can part the sea, Jesus, lover of my soul. One who gave his all for me, we trust you, God. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Faithful friend, faithful to a thousand generations of your children. Hey, Church on the Mountain and Pastor Michael, I love you guys so much. You guys live in the most beautiful place in California, besides Ventura. I want you to know during these days of social distancing and isolation, the church is still the church. We're still meeting. And just like it says in Acts, they met in the temple, but they also met from house to house. I want to encourage you today that our God, I believe California is now under really a spell of an awakening, uh, a spell of revival and outpouring, and we are believing for miracles. And I just wanna say right now that God is gonna give you the answer to your prayers. I feel it's the same verse that comes to me when God told Daniel, your prayer was heard when you first prayed it. Watch, now the manifestation and the answer of your prayer is gonna be realized tomorrow, Three days from now, a month from now, this is your greatest year. I love you guys. Have a good day. Welcome everybody to Church on the Mountain Online. Yes, good morning. It's Palm Sunday and we're so glad you guys joined us today. 
Yeah, Palm Sunday is it's an awesome time that the church celebrates the week before the resurrection. And, you know, somebody would say, well, what is Palm Sunday? And why are all these people posting things about Palm Sunday? So we thought we would just start our little time uh, from the book of Matthew. It says in Matthew 21, talks about that. And what it is, is the triumphal entry of Christ coming into Jerusalem. And so when many begin to get their palm branches, they begin to throw um, articles of clothing even and wave their hands in the air and, and they begin to say, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And I just believe with all my heart that just as Jesus was entering into Jerusalem and he was, he was entering into people's lives, I believe Jesus is entering into our families. He's entering into our country entering into our churches in a whole new way. Something powerful is about to happen. Hope is coming. Hope is here. Joy is here. I, right. I believe, you know, we serve a God that's not dead, but he's alive. And so we can still be happy. You know, whether we're watching a screen or we're in church, we can be happy, you <laughs> know, because right. we serve a resurrected king. So we're yeah. just going to pray real quick. And we have a few things that the Lord has put on our heart. Um, and so, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for your resurrection. We thank you for your life and your joy and your power that is here and it is available to every home right now. And God, we thank you, God, for your precious blood that is more than enough. And we thank you, God, for protection for every home, for every individual. And God, just be with every family today and uh, be with our country today. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 So we're just going to share a few things. Um, once again, you know, Psalm 91, I know this is all over the internet, yeah. but I'd encourage you just keep reading it. Keep, keep studying it. It is, it's life right now. Mm -hmm. And so there was two verses, just the first two verses that Heather was going to read. And then we we're just going to share a few things from our heart. Hi guys. So Psalm 91, I love Psalm 91. It's so powerful and it's so powerful just as a Psalm of protection, supernatural protection over us. And the first two verses say, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. And I just love that because, you know, He is our hiding place. When everything is scary around us, we can hide in Him. We can find our peace in Him. Um, it just takes kind of just a refocusing of our intentions and our heart and we can just find that place of peace in his presence mm -hmm. in his shelter Amen. and I was talking to Mike about a time in our life that it kind of reminds me of what we're going through right now is when our daughter was sick and we were in the hospital with her on a quarantine mm -hmm. and her immune system was extremely compromised and so we could not leave we couldn't go places we had normally gone um, visitors were extremely limited we pretty much lived between the Ronald McDonald House and the hospital mm -hmm. and it felt really really isolating and we felt alone um, and just cut off from the world and we kind of are experiencing that now I know a lot <laughs> of us are as we're quarantined in our homes during this um, time of the virus and so you know for us we just really held on to God and we held on to him so close and so tight in that season mm -hmm. and I just feel like we're supposed to do that now too and just Take refuge in him. Amen. He is your refuge. He is your fortress and your protection. Um, and just to press into him like never before. Yeah. Uh, one of the moms that I got to know during our treatment time with my daughter was, she was sort of at the end of their treatment cycle with their son, and we had just started ours. And she said something to me as we were talking one day that just really stuck in my heart. She said, Heather, one day you will be on the other side of this. Amen. And when she said, you'll be on the other side of this, I just couldn't imagine it at that moment. I so longed for the normal things of life. I just wanted to be in my house. I just, you know, wanted to do the things that I had always done, um, like laundry. And, um, <laughs> and so anyway, it just gave me hope. It gave me hope that, yes, one day we would get through. And um, I just want to encourage you with that today, Amen. that you will get through this. We will be on the other side of this. And just take refuge in the Lord. He's Hallelujah. your strength. You can trust Him. Amen. That's so good. I, you know, all throughout Scripture, we see this very thing happening where it, people can rest in the Lord. And, and they, they almost are hiding, but they're not hiding because they're scared. They're hiding because they're trying to get into God's protection. They're abiding in the Lord. And 
You see that in Moses' life with the children of Israel in the book of Exodus during Passover, which is really neat because we're actually entering into that right now. And with all this stuff going on in the world, we just so happen to be entering into Passover during, uh, during the time of Easter. And I, it's pretty, pretty special. Um, I, I think the Lord's in it. You know, how about you? I don't know. But, but what, were you gonna say, <laughs> what were you going to say about, about Moses and Passover and, and just kind of hiding? Um, what were you thinking about? Well, that? I think just, just like what Mike said, they, you know, they weren't hiding. They were um, under the protection of the Lord. They were literally under the blood. And that's and we're under the blood of the Lamb. And so just knowing that we're in a place of safety, even though there's chaos outside our homes, uh, we have Christ in us. He's with us, Amen. and we are under His protection. We are under the shadow of His wing, and um, the blood of Jesus is enough. And so we just plead the blood of Jesus over you, over your home, um, over your life, and we just know that God mm. is going to protect us. He's going to come, come through. He's, he's so good. Like the Lord is, he's just so faithful and he's been faithful to us. He's been yes. faithful to us individually together and he's been faithful to you. I know he has. And, mm -hmm. you know, all throughout scriptures, I'm so encouraged by the, by the faithfulness of God. And, you know, I was reminded personally, just as we were going through our week, um, you know, at church, we did a, a series a little while back on the life of Elijah, not knowing we were, what we were about to get ourselves into yeah. worldwide. But I started studying the life of Elijah and I was so fascinated by his life and by everything that he went through, by the by the peaks and by the valleys, by by the heartache, by the depression, by you know, just the triumph. I was just so fascinated. And I just find myself and our country and really the world, I feel like we are in this first Kings moment and kind of this Elijah moment. And and so I just wanted to read a couple verses back from 1 Kings chapter 17, because I think it really relates to where we are mm -hmm. as a country, where we are as a world, and I think we can, we can glean from the life of Elijah during this season. And this was really neat. In, in chapter 17, it says, um, Elijah said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except by my word. So he prophesies that there's going to be a great famine. Then the word of the Lord comes to him saying, get away from here and turn eastward and hide uh, by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Mm -hmm. And so Elijah found himself um, in the midst of a famine. He found himself in the midst of a, I, I mean, yes, the Lord told him to speak these words and they came to pass but then God says this, he says, I want you to get out from this place of, that you're used to, and I want you to go into hiding. He says, I want you to hide there. Um, but, but he wasn't hiding, he wasn't trying to like stockpile and all the toilet paper and collect all this stuff. I, I gotta get my Lysol. And, um, he was abiding in God. Like he was, he was trusting in the protection of the Lord. And so there's just something so special, I think, that began to happen in Elijah's life in this season, which, you know, we're in a famine right now. Mm -hmm. There's a worldwide famine and, and there's this a spirit of fear that, and, and this hysteria that's just trying to wreak havoc on the nations. And, but we have to abide in God, just like it says in Psalm 91, just like Moses did. And Elijah did this so beautifully. He, he learned how to abide. And God said, I'm going to teach you a lot of things in this season of quarantine. I'm going to teach you. And I believe that's what mm -hmm. God wants to speak to us today. I think he wants to teach us yeah. that he's our provider. Like we don't have to get afraid. We don't have to be scared. Like the Lord, if the Lord can provide um, food to Elijah through ravens, like think what he's <laughs> going to do for you and for me. Like we have Amazon, hallelujah. You know, we have butcher box, praise the Lord. You know, although not Amazon Prime at not the Amazon moment, Prime. but <laughs> God's going to provide, like he is going to provide for you. And he, I think the Lord wants us to remember once again, like we don't have to rely on man, rely on the Lord. He's your source. Like that's what God began to teach Elijah in hiding in a cutoff place. That's literally what this place was. If you, if you read 
um, the original definition, it, the brook Cherith, is a, it's a cutoff mm-hmm. place. Mm-hmm. It's a place of desperation. And so he takes okay. him into this place of desperation, this place of, a, of, of being cut off from everything that he knew. And God begins to do a process in his life. And so mm-hmm. I think God's doing a process in my life, in our life, in the church's life. And he's Absolutely. teaching us once again, I'm your provider. I'm your protector. Yeah. I'm your healer. I'm your father. And so we, let's come to God with, with this kind of heart and with humility. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I believe the Lord is going to transform our nation. Mm-hmm. I believe it with all my heart. And let's begin to pray prayers like Elijah prayed. You know, he would pray. He would just say, God uh, of my fathers, God mm-hmm. of Abraham, Isaac, yes. and Jacob, I know you can do this. Mm-hmm. And he had, a, he had a confidence in his heart, you know. And it was funny, if you read... If you read Elijah's life, he had so much faith after he left this season. And I just want to speak Mm -hmm. that over all of us, that I believe you're going to have so much grace and you're going to have so much faith Mm -hmm. as you enter into the new season of your life because you're going to know that he's your provider. You're going to know that you know that you know that he's your father, that you hide under the shelter of the Almighty. And and so when we hide, biblical hiding is not running away scared. Biblical Mm -hmm. hiding is abiding. And so Mm -hmm. I just want to encourage you today to abide in the presence of God. Yes. And so we love you. We're here for you. And um, we, we're going to end our time with a little bit of worship. And, and I pray that as this worship goes forward, that you would just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you, to speak to your heart, and to do what only He can do. Yes. And after this is over, we're going to come back and we're just going to pray a prayer with you. And, and uh, so God bless you. We love you.
situation and the Bible says we're two or more gathered that he's in the midst of us and there's no distance in the spirit so and of course we're together so <laughs> so we're just gonna pray so God I thank you Lord that we can look to you in every season in every circumstance you are faithful I thank you that you are faithful to us God when we were in a situation where we didn't know what to do with our daughter when she was suffering and she was sick God and you're with us in this situation where there's tremendous suffering happening in our world God and we look to you we look to you for help we call on the name of Jesus we ask you to forgive us God and just we repent Father and we just want to live for you with our whole heart and our whole lives God and we just thank you for protection Psalm 91 protection over everyone that, that are um, every person that's on the front lines father the doctors the nurses the medical staff that are literally running into the face of this to help others and to serve others God we just declare your protection and your peace over them and just people working at the grocery stores and and others serving father God that they're still out in the public Lord we just thank you for protection over them and for the ones in hospitals God and the ones that are sick we just speak healing mm. over you right now in the name of Jesus and I thank you that it says the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings and so yes. we just thank you God that you are rising up just like you rode into Jerusalem God and um, as our king and we just look to you the king of kings to mm. rescue your people and to be um, our source for everything every need we have God and so we love you and I pray a blessing over every person every person listening right now in Jesus name thank you father in 2nd Chronicles seven fourteen, it says if my people who are called mm -hmm. by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Mm -hmm. You know, I've just been so stirred lately. Um, every morning I've been finding myself praying this simple prayer that I actually got many years ago from Lou Engle. And it was this, it was, God, I repent of my sins. Mm -hmm. I repent of the sins of my nation. God, end abortion. 
and send revival to America. But I just kind of flipped the words with our new situation. I begin to pray this, God, I repent of my sins. I repent for the sins of my nation. God, end this virus and send revival to America. Amen. And so I pray this would be our prayer moving forward because yeah. revival starts with us. Revival starts with repentance. And so whatever is going on in our life, you know, repentance isn't a scary word. It's just turning from dead works. It's turning from, mm -hmm. from sin. It's turning from all the things that are trying to pull our attention and our affection away from a good father. And so let's turn away from these things and turn to a good and a loving and a faithful savior, Jesus Christ, who gave it all for us. Yes. And, uh, and we know that he is triumphant. We know that he's victorious. We know that he's here with us. Mm -hmm. And I, I love Psalm 34. He is with us when we cry out. He's our ever-present help. And so, Father, I just thank you that you're here right now. And we just make that conscious decision um, to repent for our sins. And, and maybe you're sitting there for the first time and you said, I've never repented. I've never accepted Christ in my heart. You could do that right now. And I would encourage you just, just to, to make that decision in your heart. Just make him the Lord of your life. And you could just say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I want to live for you. And that's really as simple as it is. And, and so, Father, I just thank you for this day. Mm -hmm. I thank you that you're with us. You're with every single family. I pray grace over every home and over every family watching. And we thank you, God, for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for Passover, God, that not one person watching this will, will, uh, will be harmed. Not one person watching this will be harmed by this virus, by any sickness. We thank you for protection from the Most High God. We worship you, Jesus. We give you all the glory as we enter into our Easter weekend. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks and for tuning in. Yes. And we do. We thank everybody on the front lines, all the doctors, the nurses. There's mm -hmm. so many. Uh, you know, just send some messages. Send some phone calls to people. <laughs> Tell them how much you love them. Tell them how much you um, they mean to you. The people at the grocery stores, the truckers. There's so many. We're so thankful for all the people that are working overtime in our county, in our cities, mm -hmm. and in our nation. So thank you. We love you. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.